Hi, I'm Wheat Williams with the Bob Moog Memorial Foundation, and we're here at the Orange Peel in Asheville, North Carolina, for Bob Moog's 75th birthday party. Of course, Bob passed away three years ago, but the Moog Foundation uh, is a nonprofit organization created by his family to honor his legacy. And we're extremely thrilled because uh, we've gotten a very large grant from the Buncombe County Tourist Bureau, that's Asheville's county, to build a Bob Moog Memorial Museum. And we are unveiling the plans. We've got Mogerfogers and theremins and synthesizers, and people can try them all out hands-on. We've got uh, a live album being tracked and mixed and recorded on stage in front of a, a live audience. We're very excited about that. All modern synthesizers, whether they're keyboards or whether they're GarageBand or Logic or Cubase in your computer, they all make sounds in the way that Bob Moog initially created in the 1960s. Oscillators, filters, voltages, the ways of processing the signals and making the sound, and most importantly, making synthesized sound musically expressive. So Bob laid all that groundwork in the 60s and the 70s, and then he continued for the rest of his life to work with various companies to create new musical instruments. And we feel that it's really important uh, for everybody to know about the history of electronic music because Bob's work touches everything in modern music, whether it's classical, whether it's rock, electronica, any genre at all. And in 2012, we're going to break ground on uh, the new Moogseum. We want you to come to Asheville, North Carolina, and find out what it's all about. We hope you'll come see us at moogfoundation.org. Thanks. I've been working with the Bob Moog Foundation for about the last uh, almost going on two years now. And I find it a very worthy cause because I love the spirit of Bob Moog, the spirit of invention. The Moogseum uh, represents to me um, a central hub of where we can pay tribute to Bob, pay tribute to all of his innovations, all of his inventions, and it's also a place where we can expand into the future. It's like we can pay tribute to the past and we can also continue everything that he's created into the future. It was my first foray into architecture. I'm a multimedia artist and a graphic designer and it was an amazing lesson on scale for me, both the Moogseum and the Mini Moogseum. I originally got my original inspiration for it by going out to Bob's house out here in Leicester, just uh, about 15 miles outside of town. He lived in a round house, this really unique round house. Beautiful hills in the background, beautiful mountains. They actually still do electromagnetic um, shielded testing out there for Moog music. But anyway, um, the round house kind of, that was my first starting point for the round design of the Moogseum, kind of having a central space in the middle and moving out in concentric circles, kind of like a little wave pattern moving outward. And then having all these different things surrounding from a history room to a digital archive to uh, a music experience room, on and on and on, all sorts of different options. open in about three to five years in steps. And our first very important step is happening here tonight. Just yesterday we installed the Mini Moseum in the front hall of the Orange Peel upon Pat Whalen's request. Um, that showcase was built all by uh, local artists who have spent hundreds of hours creating it and uh, conceptualizing it. You'd be hard pressed to find anybody who's contributed as much to our, uh, you know, our, our contemporary oral world as uh, as Bob Moog.